All right, so this topic is how do you know the direction of wind on a weather map? So, so a lot of times you see the high and the low pressure symbols on the weather map. So you'll see a high pressure like this, and you'll see a low pressure like this on a weather map. How do you know, like if you were standing at a certain point, like somewhere in here, how do you know basically the direction that the wind would be at different points on this weather map? How do you know? Well, first of all, we need to understand the basic nature here of what these two uh, systems want to do. High pressure always wants to move towards low pressure. It's kind of like saying something always wants to, a ball always wants to roll downhill. So the high pressure wants to go straight to the low pressure. That's what it wants to do. But the Earth is spinning, okay? So it can't go directly there. It has to go in a cyclical fashion. So this is getting into the concept of vectors with physics. Basically, around a high pressure, you have something called an isobar. Okay, so there's an isobar. And you have them around low pressure too. And these are lines of equal pressure. Okay, and so as these go out, each one of these lines has equal pressure on it. So it could be a thousand millibars, 900 mill, whatever it is. It gets higher as it goes up, so 900,000, whatever. Same thing around the low pressure. So they make these rings. They're not exactly circular or concentric, but um, they're somewhat circular. Okay, the tighter that these are, it's kind of like uh, think about these like you know like a map, like altitude. If these are tight, it, like between each other, that means that there's a lot of pressure difference, and the wind is pretty pretty strong in here. So what happens is high pressures, high pressures are going to spin clockwise. I'm talking about northern hemisphere, but clockwise. Okay, so high pressure is going to spin clockwise. So the air is going to want to spin in this clockwise direction like this. So this is vectors. And it's going to spin not exactly tangent. It's going to kind of curve out a little bit to get to this low. Okay, so wherever you are and you see the isobar, go clockwise and you're going to get that tangent path. Like I said, it's going to curve a little bit out, especially as it gets towards the surface because of the Coriolis effect. So it's going to be spinning out a little bit because it's trying to get to that low, but basically they're going to be tangent like this, going in a clockwise fashion as you get away. Now, if a high interacts with a low, uh, basically you get a lot of these isobars getting really tight into here as they interact like this because a low pressure is going to spin counterclockwise like this. But again, you got these vectors that are tangent to the path like this. They're tangent. Okay, they're tangent. So tangent, 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 tangent. Okay, so what happens here? Well, if you're in between this path, you're getting winds basically uh, from both of these combining their strength in here. So you're going to get a really strong wind going this way. Why? Because the high pressure is on this side pushing this way and the low pressure is on this side pushing this way. So basically the wind would be shooting straight through here like this and it would be very strong. And so when these highs and these lows interact and they get really close to each other, you get really strong winds. But you can look at a map at any point and basically tell the direction of the wind based upon these isobars and then you know where where you would be in relation to that. So if I had other points out here, um, you know, if I had A, B, and C here, if I had another point out here that was like, uh, you know, like point, you know, point D, let's just say, um, you know, the wind would be coming from a completely different direction. And out here, if I had a point E, it would be coming from this direction. So it's, it's basically vectors, tangent path, but, you know, you need to understand that these isobars are going to be basically tracing out a tangent path to the winds.